Yep. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna try to start a class on TAM since we have a two hours cut off uh, TAM for today. Um, so um, I'm gonna try to go th through the entire material, but uh, most of the material should be in your handoff already. So if we couldn't go through, um, we should be able, you guys should be able to have the information and then feel free to ask questions on the Facebook group, then I can help answer things. All right. And one thing for me to remember today is to talk a little bit slower. That is my problem. Um, but yeah, um, one of the common things for pediatrician is we tend to rambling a lot. So um, something we, we need to practice on. Okay, um, so since there's almost time, um, and then, oh, before I forget, Undine can, you give me kind of like a one hour and then half an hour kind of timer uh, so that I kind of know when to kind of speed up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, between an hour, we, might, uh, we, we have the break uh, in, a, in yep. an hour. Yeah, I yes. believe I built it into the slide. So hopefully that will help me remember it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, um, so, Welcome everyone. I'm glad to see there's quite a bit of you guys here today, which is great. Uh, it's always hard to come back to class after like break. So I'm glad to see uh, most of you guys here. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Sarah. My Vietnamese name is Ye Khan. I'm a pediatrician in uh, Wisconsin. I actually a uh, um, neonatal um, a fellow physician, which is uh, training to become a neonatologist. Um, so uh, my, the topic we're gonna talk about today is the respiratory tract and uh, ENT or ear, nose and throat um, in full. Um, so the main goal is for us to practice. Um, you have owned a hand up. I know you guys, know most of the words so I'm not gonna go too deep into like explaining the words or all of that but because I'm a pediatrician and so the first thing they grill into me uh, in residency is we need to talk to our patients in the language they can understand so as you guys noticed in my handoff there are a lot of lay term terminology as well so one thing I noticed when I face like when I meet doctor who like trained in other country who uh, work in the States is that they are excellent in terminology. They don't really know how to explain things to patients in regular English. Because to be honest, US only and most of the classes teach you terminology, right? They don't really teach you the regular terms that the patient will use, but you are talking to the patient, you're getting history from the patients you're going to need to be able to know those words to understand the patients. And you also need to be able to use the word that the patient can understand for it to be effective, right? So we'll talk about terminology today since because it's the, the class, but we're also going to talk about layman uh, terms so that you guys can actually talk to your patient as well. All right. So before we start the class, let's spend a couple of minutes just to kind of break the ice a little bit um, so that everyone kind of like get their uh, English muscle starting, get all of the muscle in the face starting. Um, so we can talk a little bit better. All right. Um, so I'm going to ask Andine for this because uh, I'm not very good with like remember which, which number I already picked. So um, I'm going to ask Andine to kind of pick the five, six uh, numbers. And then I want you guys just to give me a quick introduction. I know you guys already learned about your specialty. So I want your specialty. Um, and as pediatrician, we like something fun. So some random fun fact about you that no one knows about. So that's the three questions I want. Um, your name, your specialty, and then a fun fact about you, all right? All right, so I, I guess I should start first since I'm asking you to do it. I should actually do it. Um, so my, uh, as I said, my name is Sarah. I'm a pediatrician or hopefully soon to be a neonatologist. Um, and the fun fact about me is I am a board game collector. I actually have a collection of uh, 300 plus board games um, at the moment, and I hope to continue to build on it. 
All right, now and then uh, I'm gonna ask you to pick a, uh, a number for me, thank you. Okay, guys, um, before I call your number or your name, anybody to be a volunteer? Okay, no, no, fast. No, uh, 29. <laughs> yeah, 29, please. Um, I, my name is Nai. Um, I'm a medical student. Um, I'm a final medical student. Um, fun fact about me. Actually, I have nothing to tell about fun facts. Sorry. Okay, guys, you know, just remind uh, what Sarah tell you. Eh? You have to be quick, precise, and don't say around, around. Eh? No, just go quick, your name, your specialty, and your workplace, something. Eh? Try to do that because in the future, you have to do that very quick and efficient. Okay, not go around. Now, the next one, um, I think um, 56. Please, 56. Yeah. Hello, my name is Don, and I'm a radiologist. And uh, I love, because I love watching film. Hi. Nice to meet you, Tom. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay, now. Number 36, 36. Hello everyone, my full name is Nguyen Thi Thanh Hien and I have just finished um, at the medical school. And uh, some fun fact about me is, um, I don't like animal a lot. Okay. I just wondering that do I pronounce correctly? <laughs> 36 <laughs> or 46? Which one of you are? I think you said 46. Uh, I, no, I think you said 36, but I'm I'm glad that uh Tan Hien, you picked it up. So Okay. Like, nice to meet you. Yeah. And then just a, a quick uh, pronunciation correction for you here. Fun fact, there's a T and then you pronouncing it sound like a K at the end. Um, it's kind of important because like right now, the, the that word does not get misunderstood a lot. But like sometimes if you say like, uh, like pitch or fix, like if you don't say it correctly, it sounds very much like some cuss word. So just Kind of making sure that you pronounce the um the the ending uh sound of the word that's the that's the fastest way to make you sound like a native english speaker is to try to pronounce the ending okay and before 36 okay could i pronounce correctly before 36 could win something uh pronounce again your specialty again because it's it's the most important in this course that you have to pronounce correctly your specialty. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm a radiologist. Okay. So, how are you saying, uh, Sarah? How are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So again, I I, I think uh, I did watch um an an uh, whole class before, and then I I think he keeps saying the same thing over and over. So, try to say things very slow. Like we have a tendency to go through the word quickly, especially words that have multiple syllables, because we worry that we won't sound like a native speaker if we do. So I want you to kind of slow down a little bit. You are a radiologist. So radiologist. All right. Can you try again, Tom? Yes. Uh, I'm a radiologist. Yep, that's a little bit better. Uh so and then like the 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 middle part should be a little bit softer and then just put the uh, like emphasis on the uh, law. So radiologist, radiologist, yep, all logist. Yes, radiologist. Yep, that, that sounds great. <laughs> okay, now 36. 
I think next to the last. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm not an, I'm a medical student in the fifth year. So nice to meet you. All right, and then Ngọc, uh, what's, uh, tell us about a fun fact about you. Um, I uh, love K-pop music and uh, I love um, Big Bang and um, uh, Blackpink. Nice. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, now the last one. Um, 68. Hello, my name is Adrian. I am a cultural anthropology. Uh, I like right. travel. I like travel and uh, and it's uh, and gym. Right, you like travel and gym. Can you gym. repeat that word for me? Gym. Yep, that's okay. Gym. That's better. Yep, excellent. Yeah. So just to making sure that you say word clearly because sometimes like i feel like because of our hesitations it's just you kind of muddle the word a little bit just just say each word clearly for me okay and then with your specialty can you pronounce your specialty again for me uh hong Wing, can you pronounce your specialty yes yeah. um, um you know my name is win i am a actual and to lose you. Okay. So again, slow down for me, okay? So you are a gastroenterologist. Gastroenterologist. All right, that's better. All right. And then now you can try to do it a little bit slower and a little bit smoother. All right, try again. Gastroenterologist. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So just remember, like, slow down a little bit. It's a lot easier for a native speaker to understand you if you actually pronounce the sound for them. Because, like, most of the time they can deal with accent just fine. The thing that they struggle with is sometimes because of our subconscious, we slur the word and they couldn't really understand it because we just slur them. But if you slow down, speak them clearly, they will understand you just fine. Thank you. All right, and then is it the, I think we have one more, right? And then, or is it the last yeah. one? Uh -huh. Did I? Okay, now, um, I pick up one that didn't tell, I didn't write down the number, Fang I couldn't, I couldn't uh, track your number. Um. Hello, my name Lu. My number is uh, ninety one. <laughs> I forget. Um, I'm a doctor, a traditional medicine. Uh, I like sport. Great, nice to meet you, Lu. Nice to oh, meet and you. yep, and then one thing for like all of us, like especially those who's already graduate, when you introduce yourself, especially when you introduce yourself to your patients, um say that you are doctor whatever uh and your name because that that is the thing that established the relationship between you and the patient because if you just say a random person it doesn't really mean anything to them like believe me your patient gonna see five or six human beings like every few minutes in the hospital so they will not remember you so that word doctor is kind of like telling them that like you are the one who in charge of their health and they should pay attention to you. So that is not like flashing or like um, kind of like bragging, it just actually established the relationship with your patients. All right, all right. Thank you everyone for sharing their, their fun facts. Um, all right, and then I'm just gonna share this line, we can start. And I really love the your that you or all of you are trying really hard um, to say the word and I want it to continue because that is the main goal of our class to actually giving you guys a chance to practice because otherwise we wouldn't need to be here I can just send you the handout we can just have two hours of our weekend back right all righty so let's 
go ahead and start. All right. So uh, every specialty in um, medicine really have a core group of terminologies that they kind of revolve around, right? So let so this table is kind of give you like a big most commonly used terminologies it doesn't cover everything, but it's usually the thing that you're gonna see the most when you talk about the lungs, the respiratory tract, or the uh, the ear, nose, and throat system. Okay, all right. So um, I'm gonna ask them to pick number for me, and then each of you, if you can do two terminology for me, that would be great. Uh, do the meaning and the example as well. Mm. Okay, uh, number 61. Uh, yes, it's me. I'm Dr. Thor, endocrinology doctor. Okay. Mm. Nice to meet you, Thor. Uh, so why don't you start with the first one? Pronounce it and then uh, try to guess the meaning of it. Yes, Jin, Jin or Zino is meaning. Uh, all right, so pause right there real quick. So the first word is rhino. Um, so it's like a rhinosaurus is the um, uh, something very like R-H, like, like pronounced just like an R. So rhino. Gyna. Can you pronounce it? Yep. Uh, slow, slow down, pr pronounce it again for me. Rhino. Rhino. Like, rhino. It's just like an, an R. Rhino. Rhino. Okay, that's a little bit better. All right, and then what's the next word? Laji. All right, so this word, can you pronounce this word for me? Um, Nasho. So it's, it's, so in English, uh, the, the letter A in Vietnamese is pronounced as A. So it's nasal. Na na nasal. Yep, that's great. All right, so what do you think the word rhino and the word nasal means? I think it's uh, nose. Perfect. It's... All right. And then, oops, well, that is way too quick. Um, so can you try to pronounce the example for me and then can you guess what it is? Jainitis. Uh, all right, so rhinitis. Rhinitis. All right. And yeah. Uh, all right. So what what that word mean? Do you know? Um. So I think you guys learned the word the the suffix itis last time already, right? So can you just kind of like use what you guys learned the last time? Break down the word and try to guess the meaning for me. Yes. Uh, is um uh, no. All right, so mm -hmm. let's break let's break it down together, okay? It, it's, All right. So it, you have the the suffix itis, sub, right? Sub, sub this, itis meaning uh, inflammation. Perfect. And then what's the sub, uh, what the root is? Pre 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 prefix is right gyn, is uh, meaning nose okay so what's the whole word mean then uh janitis meaning inflammation of nose yep perfect all right so it's just the inflammations of the, the nasal passages perfect all right and then what's the next word the next word is a nas nasal gastric Yep. Uh, so I, I want you to pronounce the O just like a regular O. So nasogastric. Nasogastric. Perfect. All right. So let's break down the word then. What gastric do you know? I'm sorry. Nasogastric. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know gastric. I don't okay. remember this word. Okay. Um, so gastric. Uh, uh, I think we have not covered uh, the GI tract yet. So gastric means stomach. Oh, All right. So gastro, yeah. uh, gastro is the root word, means stomach. 
And then yeah. what's nasal? Nasal is, is uh, meaning nose, and I I guess it's uh, the first the first part of uh, gastric gastric yep. about nose uh, mm -hmm. stomach and uh, intestine. Okay. Yeah. So. so so this was is a little bit tricky. It's actually describing a passage, right? So nasogastric mean from the nose to the stomach. Is yes. that the, is the meaning yeah. of it? So the word is usually come and used to describe the feeding tube. So nasogastric tube is where you put the tube to the nose to the stomach to give yes. food. All right, excellent. All right, I know like some of these words can be like tricky and hard to know, but that's why we're here. That's why we're here to learn. All right, you want to give it another um, try for the next word? Yes, thank you, teacher. All right, so pronounce this for me then. All right, so what what is this? How do you pronounce it? La lazy. Oh, like, okay, so it's la ring la ring yep perfect so um so what do you know what that uh, word means la ring mean la jeans. yep so it's actually coming from the word the larynx right so the the only difference is that instead of the g it's an x so la rings and la ring is the the, the, a little bit of different in pronunciation. All right. Do you think you can give me a, an example for that word? Um, Lajin Zotomi. All right. So all right, let's bring that out so we can actually see together. All right. Do you know what that means? Uh, it's, and it's okay. Uh, it's okay if you don't don't know either. Like just let let us know that you don't know, and then we can discuss it together. Okay. Yes. All right. So why don't we try together? So we already kind of talk about the root word, right? So now we just have to figure out what automy is, right? So automy means automy. Automy. It is uh, it automy meaning um cast up cast up something. Yep. So it means that you're cutting something out, like you're cutting something open, right? So perfect. All right. So what is laryngotomy then? Uh, Latin laryngotomy uh, mean cut the the larynx. Yep, so it means just cutting the larynx, the larynx open, right? Perfect. All right, why don't you pronounce that word one more time and then we move on to the next uh, person, okay? Uh, Thao, do you want to pronounce that, uh, the word laryngotomy? Wait, one more time for me. Uh, Larynx got, got to me. Perfect, all right, so the the stress is on the o like before the 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 autumn, right so just remember where you stress you stress but yeah i like how like you pronounce it very slowly and clearly um as with time you're going to get used to it and you can pronounce it a little bit quicker but right now when you're learning just do that for me perfect all right thank you thank you for like practicing and uh hanging with it thanks all right. thank you yes. yep all right let's move on to the next person Okay, number six. Uh, yes. Uh, the next term is the pharynx. Uh, this meaning uh, 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 it the between the uh, uh, after the mouse it is the home. home, home. I don't. I, I think I can explain in in language uh, uh, English language. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the, 
you you are correct. I, I I and then that's one of the reason why I always include layman term because sometimes it gets tricky when you just have to actually describe something and not using terminology, right? So the the word laring like laring is coming from the root larynx, right? It's the terminology for the organ itself, and the layman term is throat. So when the patient talking about the the, the pharynx, they're talking about their throat. All right, and then can you give me an like an example using the uh, the root pharynx? I think uh, pharynx, uh, gastrologist, uh, uh, pharynx. Uh... All right, so pharynx pharyngology is that what you said? Can can you repeat the word you just said, Tom? Ah, uh, pharynx. Far, I'm sorry, pharynx gastrologist. Geologists, pharyngologists. Pharyngologists. So what 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 would it uh, what is the meaning of that word then? Geologists. Uh, pharyngologists. Um pharyngologists. I'm sorry. All right, so let let break it down to, together, right? So what is okay. ologist mean? Uh, cultures is the doctor he had the specialty in the something error. All right. Uh, so what is pharyngologist then? I think it's doctor who had the special in the pharynx. Yeah. Uh, um. So I I'm not actually sure if there there actually is a doctor who specialize in the pharynx like itself. Um. Uh, but yeah, like that would that would be a correct English term. So. Bravo for that. All right. And then the other example I have here is pharyngitis. Um, so do you know what that means? Uh, it just, uh, I just, is mean the inflammation. So pharyngitis is mean inflammation in the pharynx. All right. It's pharyngitis. Pharyngitis. You... Perfect. All right. And then can you pronounce the word inflammation for me again? Inflammation, inflammation. Like inflammation, like the stress is on the, uh, the MA be before the shunt, like inflammation. Inflammation, Infl yep. inflammation, yes. Perfect, excellent. All right, let's move on to the next word. Uh, it's me, oh, sorry. Yep, uh -huh. so each, each of us gonna do two. Um, so we don't have to switch people too much. Okay. Uh, is the tray tricky? I don't. Uh, I don't know exactly that pronunciation. You uh, actually correct. It's tricky. Perfect. Tricky. Okay. Yep. Uh, All right. Tricky and then... is, uh, tricky is mean. Uh, uh something. I tricky is the area in the. Uh, the air, air, air weight is in the way where the key one. Mm -hmm. the so do, do, do you know the terminology for that organ then in English? Uh, echo fractures. I, I, I just remember in the reading, but I don't know exactly where it uh, pronounced and speaking. Right. So trachea uh, or tracheo is coming from the, the organ trachea. So trachea is the windpipe where we breathe through, right? It's the big, the big airway that we breathe through. All right. So, and then can you uh, read um, the example for me? Tracheology, uh, tracheotomy. All right. So you see that little S right there? Yes. You need to pronounce that because otherwise it become a different uh, procedure. So it's tracheostomy. Tracheotomy. Otomy. So, ost, pronounce the S for me. Tracheostomy. Tracheotomy. Like, I want, I want to hear the S from you. Tracheostomy. Tracheotomy. Like, can you, can you give me an S? So, os. Os, os, os. Os, yep. Os. Right. Tracheostomy. Tracheotomy. 
So you you are meeting the S from uh, from the word. So Draki Os. Can you just stop that? Draki Os. Draki Os. Yep. Draki Os Tommy. Draki Os Tommy. No. Draki Os Tommy. Draki Os Tommy. There you go. So don't don't omit the S because otherwise it become a different procedure. Tracheotomy is the different procedure from tracheostomy. Okay, thank you. Okay, All right. So tracheostomy, do you know what that means? Uh, yes. Uh, tracheostomy is mean the uh anatomy in the open the airway uh, open the trachea. Uh, mm -hmm. it's mean the uh fourth of my uh, part. It is the, yep. the yes. Yep. So so that's why I'm making sure you say the the S in the tracheostomy because without that S, it becomes just open the air, like open the airway without actually putting the tube in there. Tracheostomy is you making a hole of something. Oh. All right. Okay. So, okay. Th and that's why it's very important for you not to miss that S because it means a complete different procedure that we are talking about. Okay, thank you. Yep, All right, thank you. All right, next person. Uh, 21, please. Twenty-one, please. Oh sorry, sorry. I I talk is a thirty-one. Yeah. You know, um right. I will try the first one is Panua. All right. So, what do you oh, think oh, no, no, that oh, means? I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, no. The first one should be. Oh. Bron um, bronco. Bronco. Yep. Bronco. 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 Right. Bronco. Perfect. All right. So, oh, I already uh give you the meaning. That's why. All right. Can you read yeah. the example for me? Yeah. The example is um, bronchitis. So bronchitis. So all of the I all of the word. Uh, one of the suffix inflammations is on itis, right? So the, the E letter in English pronounced as I. So bronchitis. Yes, bronchitis. Perfect. All right, and then you know what that means? Um, it mean the inflammation in, um, in the long air passageway. Yep, so in the airway, right? So in, in the airway. smaller airway. Perfect. All right, next word. Oops, next word. Mal is not listening to me. All right, next word. Next word here, Penu. All right, Penu. so what do you think Penu. that means? It's mean as a lung. So it's actually, so the, so the poem is actually lungs. The so new is a little bit tricky because it, we use it a lot. And a lot of times people think that it means the lungs, but it actually means the air itself. Okay, oh. so new is the meaning, uh, means air. All right. Yes. All right, and, so uh, you want to try to pronounce it for me? Yeah, um, the example is pneumonia and uh, pneumothorax. 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 Perfect. All right. So you know what that means? The, the two word means? The pneumonia is mean uh, the disease of the lung. So this is a little tricky. <laughs> this is a, like this terminology is a little bit tricky. So you remember think think back to what you learned. So you remember what the the suffix nia is. Oh, so what is it's anemia? A, it's, oh, it's a condition. Yeah. Oh. So it's a it's actually mean lacking of something. So pneumonia is lacking of air. It just means that the lung tissue is not working and that's why it's lacking of air. So it's a diseased lung because the lung's supposed to be filled with air and there's no air, so it's not normal. It's, it's a diseased area. So 
Yeah. We use that word in English mostly uh, as to, uh, to, to show an infections or an inflammation of the lung tissues. Yes. All right. So that so, uh, so there there is there is condition called pneumonitis, uh, which is the inflammation of the lungs. But new, uh, pneumonia is the actual word for infections of the lungs. So it's a special term that you guys need to remember. Yes. All right. And then okay, what pneumothorax? And uh, pneumothorax is mean. Uh, I don't know what that mean, but I uh, think the thorax it mean uh, chest. And then what pneumo? Uh, pneumo is uh, it's mean air, but I don't know what. Right. Um, so it, it, it literally means. just yep. It literally just mean that it's mean air in the thorax, right? So it it's mean that like you have a little hole in your lung tissues and the air leaked out of the the lungs and accumulate in the thorax. So I think in Vietnam, it's like heat home. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, so air, air. in the thorax is where it's not supposed to be. Yeah. So perfect, All right, next one, yeah. next person. This one. Um, 46, 46. <clears throat> Okay, the next word is humo. Right. So a lot of time you will hear the physicians in the state read it as palm. It's kind of like a, you they kind of like omit a little bit of the L. So you it's not like fully omitted. So it's kind of in between. It's kind of hidden in there. So it's palm. Hum. Yeah. Hum. Right. Yep. It so means, it also means lung. Mm -hmm. So and uh, so, for example, pulmonary is an adjective. It is used to talk about something belong the lung, like pulmonary veil. Right. So it's pulmonary. Um, it, it might just be the the pronunciation issues like that comments in Vietnam. It's pulmonary. Uh, so try pulmonary. to pronounce the the uh, the n. It's pulmonary. Pulmonary. Perfect. Excellent. Pulmonary. Yep. And pulmonologist is um a doctor and your in a. Their specialty is pulmo. Yep. So, what is the what is pulmo then? If you're gonna translate, translate everything. So, it's the doctors who specialize in the the lung. Perfect. All right. Next word. This one is this one is difficult. All right. Pronounce it first, and then we can talk about the meaning. Okay, the next word is sumo. So it's sum, right? S O M is sum. Sum. It's sum or somno. Somno. Yep. Do you know what it, what it means? So, uh, somno. Uh, yeah, I actually add this word like. After I send out the handoff, so it's not on the handoff, I'm going to update the handoff and then send it out later. So it uh, actually sleep. means sleep. Sleep. Or and yep, yeah, like anything related to sleeping. Okay, sleeping. Yep. So can you give me some examples for, yep. okay, insomnia. So hypersomnia. Yep, so insomnia. Insomnia right. and hypersomnia. Perfect. Yep. So you know what that means. So let rock, let break them out now together, right? So what is the prefix in? So insomnia, as I can remember, it mean you can sleep at night. Yep. So difficulty sleeping or lack of sleep. So in is something that is missing. Is sleep? It's yes. kind of similar to like the a a little bit. So Mia is just a 
condition. So insomnia is that it's you lack of sleep or it's, lack of sleep. It's, yep, it's harder Nine. for you to sleep. Yep. In and then hypersomnia. Hypersomnia, hyper it mean you a lot, so you sleep a lot. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Thank you. All right. Now we have five more. So two more. Two more people. Okay. Uh, number fourteen. Number 14, one, four. Yeah. Um, the next word is near. Near. Right. That's mean, what does that mean? That's mean breath. Breath. All right. Perfect. All right. So the the you are actually correct when you read the suffix as near. So when the p is usually standing alone, it usually omitted. Like or at the beginning of the the word, it usually get omitted. But when it get into the word itself, you are gonna need to pronounce it. Okay. So can you pronounce the two examples for me? This, 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 this near, this near. Yep. That's that's great. Perfect. All right, next one. And um, up near. Perfect. Uh, Excellent. All right, next word. Next word is thesis. Thesis. This yep. means um, coughing. And the for example is hemothesis. So it it have two way of like I heard both way of pronunciation for this word. Uh, so I heard uh, I heard hemoptysis or hemoptesis. I, that's the same. It, people pronounce it differently, but uh, it's just usually like whether or not you pronounce this American way or you pronounce it the Latin way. So both ways are fine, but just remember remember the P. So hemoptysis. Hemoptysis. Yep. All right. Thank you. And then the last lucky person get to pick three of three words. Okay, number okay, the lucky number 77. Hello. All right, hey. go ahead, Jack. Yeah. Uh plus T. Uh, plus T is mean uh, reconstruction. Perfect. And uh, uh, for example, it rhinoplasty. All right. So it's rhino. Remember, rhino. I. Yep, rhino. Rhinoplasty. Rhinoplasty. All right. Do you know what procedure that is? Uh, I think that is uh, is the procedure something like surgery to reconstruct the nasal. Yep. So, what is nasal then? It's nose. Perfect. All right. So it's the nose reconstruction, right? It's a very uh, famous plastic procedure that most of people do, right? All right. Next word. Uh, Mala, Malaysia. Perfect. Uh, it means that the softening. All right. So pronounce the example for me. Is uh, for example. Uh, for example. Trachio Malaysia. Perfect. Trachio Malaysia, right? Yeah. All right. So, you, you know what that means? Put things together. So, Malaysia means? Uh, it's, it's for soften. Uh, Trachio is mean. Trachio is mean. Right here. Right, tracheal. Tracheal is uh, 
something in the lung. Right. So the trachea is the main the main airway that we breathe through, right? The big the big windpipe that we breathe through. Right. So tracheomalacia is softening of the trachea or softening of the windpipe. Yeah. So this is a, a condition you see a lot in children. Mm. All right. And mm -hmm. last word. Uh, last word is scopy. Uh, scopy is mean that uh, examination or study. Perfect. And so, uh, for example, bronchoscopy. All right. So remember, ch in English, sometimes they will pronounce as k. So bronco, bronchoscopy. Bron bronchoscopy. Yep. And to, if you want to sound like a native, uh, they usually put the, when you have like a vowel and the um, um, a vowel and then a, an S for, following it, they usually mix them, like bring them together. So they, the, they will pronounce it as bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy. Perfect. All right. We are finished the terminology. I think this is the hardest table to go through because it's, I have a lot of terminologies, very difficult to pronounce. So hopefully we're gonna do a little bit quicker from now. All right, let's talk about anatomy. The first one is the ear. All right, I wanna, let, let's try if we can get a volunteer. Can I have a volunteer to read the, the terminology in the table? Come on, guy. I just want to get Andine a little break. <laughs> oh, I saw a couple of hand, hand uh, raising. Uh, Lê Thị Nhung. Yes. 25. Yes. Good morning, teacher. Uh, this is outer outer year or uh, external year. All right. So is let's start from what? the table. Okay. Uh, our auricle. It means so, pioneer. Oh. So this is an exception um, to the common rule. So the I here is actually pronounced as E or like kind of er, so oracle. Oracle, yep. or pinner, is a, uh, is mean uh, Vietnamese loa mm tai. -hmm. Yep, so Bing this is tai. this part, right? So this is this loa part of the, the ear, right? Perfect. Yes, the second word ear, ear canal. Ear canal, la, uh, Vietnamese is uh, ống tai, ống tai. Perfect. Uh, the, the third word, uh, the tympanic membrane. It means eardrum, la right. các cái chống tai, mm -hmm. là các cái right. xương. Let, let pronounce that word again for me. So it's uh, tympanic. Tympanic membrane. Perfect. So the, 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 the word membrane, Pressing uh, the the breast is on the second uh, syllable, so membrane. Brain, membrane. Me so it's on the second syllable, not membrane. It's membrane. Membrane. Perfect. All right. So tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. All right. So you you still putting the 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 stress on the first syllable. So try to remember to put the stress on the second syllable for the membrane. Okay. Membrane, yes. Right. Thank you. Perfect. And, uh, so uh, out, outer or middle or inner ear is a uh, tai All right, so outer is? Outer is a uh, tai ngoài. Middle. middle. Ear, Thai so it's up. middle, it's middle, middle, Perfect. middle, middle, middle ear, and inner ear, tai ngoài, okay. tai giữa và tai trong. Perfect. All right. Last word. And the last word is a uh, ostachian tube. All right. So this is a little bit difficult. So it's actually a naming after some guy. So that's why I'm just learning how to pronounce the guy name. So it's Eutachian. Tasian. Tasian. So. So e, EU is like, it's like Europe, right? So U, mutation. Mutation tube. Perfect. 
All right, so you know what that is? Uh, Vietnamese is voi ớt tắc. Bên trong ta. <laughs> yep, this is this little tube that connects between the middle ear down to the middle pharynx, ear, right? Cross, pharynx, and through, all through. Yes. All right. Yep. And then just kind of like a note for most of the things. So whenever you see that little equal something, the word on the right side of the equal sign is the, the layman term that your patient will use. Your patient will not tell you that their tympanic membrane hurts. They're going to say that their eardrum hurts or they hurt their eardrum. Okay. So yeah. when you talk to a physician, use tympanic membrane. When you talk to your patient, use the word eardrum. All right. Perfect. Next part of the respiratory tract. All right. Who else do want to volunteer? Oh, I guess Andy, you're just gonna have to pick another one for me. Okay. Um, okay, now uh, 58. Yeah, 58. Um, Nostril. All right, so this is a little more fun compared to the last one. So I want you to read the words and then pick the number corresponding to that organ on the pictures. All right, it's a little bit harder, but a little bit more fun compared to the last one. All right, so read the, read the first word for me. Uh, the first one, nostril. Yep. I'm not sure. And uh, nervous. So you, you pronounce that uh, correctly. So the plural is narus, uh, but the, do you know how you pronounce the singular version without an S? Nail. So it's nair. Nail. Yep, perfect. All right, so what do you think it corresponding to? Which, which number is corresponding to on the picture? Mm. So number four, is that correct? Perfect, that's number four. Excellent. That, yeah. It's the little hole that we breathe through, right? So that's the, uh, your nostril. Perfect. And then one more word for me. Tonsil. Uh, so the, the second one for me. That's the second one. Uh, sinus. Uh, sinus. Perfect. Yeah. No, sinus is correct. Sinus. Yeah. Yep. All right. So which number do you think it is? Oh, I think I give it to you. Sinus. I don't know. Sorry. All right. So it's number one, right? So that little air pocket in your skull is to make your head a little lighter, right? So sinus. So there's wow. one of them, the other one, right? Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right, next person. Uh, I think I saw... 15 uh, raised her hand the last time. So 15, you want to start this one? Number 15. Well, if not, then uh, if anyone wants to volunteer, you can raise your hand. If not, we're just going to pick a number. Well, Picking a number it is. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? Come on, guys. Oh, six, yes. 62. Uh, uh, the next was E tonsil. Yep. Yeah, tonsil. and uh, I think tonsil is number number three. Number three. Perfect. All righty, excellent. All right, and next the word. next word is ad, uh, adenoid. Yep, so adenoid. Adenoid. Yep. Yes, and, so you, and, you, and yep, you, so you say it's not included mm -hmm. in the photo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, 
And then, so, you know, so adenoid is actually just a, a, another tonsil, but it's just a very big tonsil that people have a lot of problem with. So that's why they remember the name of it. So adenoid is, you're going to hear a lot of that word from your patients. So that's why I included it there. And then why don't you do the next one as well, uh, Namfu? Uh, the next one is palate. Perfect. All right. And, and then which number do you think it is? Number in two is hard palate. And, uh, Excellent. Yeah. And then the a soft palate there, but it didn't get marked it on. But perfect. But you get an extra point for identify the hard palate. Thank you. All right. Great, great job. All right, next one I saw, Dorothy Nguyen, number seven, raise your hand. Uh, next one is pharynx. All right, I want you to pronounce the X for me, pharynx. Pharynx. Like pharynx. Okay. Pharynx. Yep, so like give me the little at the, at the end, so pharynx. Pharynx. Okay, perfect. All right, which number you think that is? Is it number five? Excellent. Perfect. All right, and then the bonus questions. Do you know what is the layman term for the pharynx? I think we mentioned it earlier as well. Sorry, I can't hear it. Can you repeat the uh, questions? What is the, uh, what is the layman term or the term that your patient will use to describe the pharynx? Do you know? Uh, maybe it's throat, I think. Excellent, perfect. That's the throat. All right, mm -hmm. next one. Next one is larynx. All right, excellent. What is the number that it's corresponding to? And is the number seven. Excellent. Perfect. All right. And then again, you you are the luck, you are the lucky person because you pick both of the terminology that have the layman term. You know what is the layman term for larynx is? Um it's actually I don't remember it. Sorry. Yeah. So this is actually not a, a easy one because I think most people don't talk about their larynx that much. So that usually don't come up in conversations, but uh, your patient would use the word voice box is the term that uh, they usually talk yeah. about when there's an issue. So, or like when you need to tell your patient that there, there's an issue with their larynx, is a lot of time we use the word voice box. It's just where all of your voice come from. So, all right, thank, thank you. you. Your pronunciation is, is really good. Thank you. All right. And then, all right, last, last two words. And last two words is epigrotis. Uh, 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 thank you, Nga. Uh, I think it Sorry? just gives someone else, someone else an, uh, an opportunity. So can I have an, another volunteer, please? Can I try? Yeah. Yes, um, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so the next word is uh, epiglottis. Excellent. And I really am I really glad that you slow down and pronounce the word because it's a very difficult word even for American doctor because it, it's just not a very like natural like word to pronounce. But like I, I, I'm glad that you slow down and pronounce it clearly. So excellent. All right. And then what do you think uh, the corresponding number is? Uh, um. I couldn't find it here, but uh, it's like uh, in Vietnamese, uh, um, nothing quite. Yep. So it's yeah. actually that little blue things right there. Okay. So that yeah. is the, the little cartilage that close your trachea, right? Yeah. So that is there, epiglottis. Okay. Um, and then yeah. just a little trick that I learned from my accent coach is like when you see that little double T between, um, like in English, you see the double T between two uh, vowel. It's actually most American will pronounce this at a D. So mm -hmm. epiglottis. Epiglottis. Like, epiglottis. Epiglottis. Yep. Epiglottis. 
Yep, it's a little softer tea, so it's like they call it a flap tea. So epiglottis. Epiglottis. Okay, perfect. All right, and then last word. Uh, the Vulcan, the Vulcan cost, cost. All right. All right, so this is a, a, a tricky one, right? Because there's a lot of like the curling, like back of your throat, uh, like uh, sound that you have to make. So vocal. Vocal. Cord. 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 Yep, so making sure you have the D and the S together. So D's, so cords. Cords. Yep, that's good, excellent. So. Read the whole word together for me. So, vocal cords. Good, perfect. All right, and then well, there's only one last number. So, and then um, I'm sure you guys knows what that means. So that's a little uh, ligament that make the no uh, make the voice for us, right? Excellent. All right, thank you. Hello, Sarah. I think that we need a break now. All right, so yeah. a little, we are a little slower, but yep, you guys mm -hmm. take a little break and then just we'll five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so good. Okay, the same time you may uh, have a coffee break or um, washroom break or anything you like. Okay. So, uh, during the break, I would like to tell you something. Yeah, if you uh, if you have a spare time with me, uh, because I just listened to your pronunciation and I think you need more practice uh, because um, otherwise, yeah, because the terminology is the hardest pronunciation for everybody, and as professionals. Um, uh, persons, you need to practice more and more. But here, I would like to tell you something about the stress or intonation. It's some tricky to do that, but there's some cue. Um, you see, like um, it, some some terms that you need to stress on correct um, syllable. That is like ologist, ologist, ology, hmm? meter, glucometer, ah, meter, uh, scopy, logist, logy. You need to start the syllable before that. Glucometer, cystoscopy. Hmm? Uh, um, like neonatologist, you see? So every, every um, uh, uh, suffix like that, you need to step the syllable before that. So that's remember. And number two, about I, like in itis, usually you see that a letter I with the um, Greek or Latin terminology, you mostly you pronounce I. Don't pronounce E, not itis, itis. Mostly there still be some exceptions, but mostly that you pronounce I. And CH, mostly you pronounce K. Chemo, chemist, something like that. I just say about the terminology. Because in English, sometimes you pronounce ch, sometimes you pronounce sh, but in medical terminologies, mostly that you pronounce k for ch. Okay, this is something that I would like to tell you. Okay. So we need to practice more and more. Uh, just you maybe have the list, sometimes you. You don't need to remember, you don't need to understand what's the meaning, but you just put a list of terms and you pronounce it and make it slowly first and then make it faster. Mm -hmm. 
Any discussions, any suggestions, any ideas in the break? Yeah, like if I can have like one suggestion for the class, like um, try to pay attention and like when you hear your numbers, um, like respond like as soon as you can, because like that will allow us to, like a little bit more time for you guys to practice. And like, I like each of us have different level of like pronunciations and English and all of that. And so sometimes I will spend a little bit more time on you, just not because that you like, you did everything wrong. It just sometimes like I see things that I can fix right there. So I'm gonna pay a little bit more attention just to kind of help you to kind of get to where um, uh, you need to be, okay? It's not not trying to pick on you. It's all for the practice, all right? And then get like, get volunteer. And then like, this is your chance to practice because like you have the list. I like, I don't really need to like ask you guys the meaning because you guys already got my hand out. You guys probably already know what the meaning is. But the reason why I want to make you guys say it is because that is a chance for you to actually practice the pronunciations and for you to like listen and answer in English, right? Because that is another skill that you're gonna need to be able to like practice and do. So like volunteer, participate. That is the best way to learn English. That is the reason why we give you the handout a week before the class. Otherwise, we don't need to because you know the instructor. I I always ask the instructor uh, make the handout for you a week before that. That's to give you time to practice. Okay. Okay, one more minute to go. So anything else? <laughs> All right, I think I built in two practice things uh, in here as well, but we didn't really get a chance. Uh, we might not have time to. So I'm gonna go through the next couple parts a little bit quicker, just because I really want you guys to get a chance to like utilize what you learn, because that for me is the best way I learn is actually using the word in a sentence and like making sense talking uh to each other is the best way because otherwise like it's just a list of words that you're gonna forget in like two days all right so if there's no objections i'm just gonna go ahead because we are a little bit behind schedule all right cool all right, so this one is a little bit easier because there's not a lot of like heavy terminology as the last couple slides. Um, so this is a common history or like term that you're gonna get like during the history checking, uh, talking about sign symptoms related to the, the lungs and the respiratory tract. All right, so I'm gonna split these in half. I'm not gonna ask you guys to like read the layman term. Um, you guys can read it there, but that is there for you guys to kind of know if that is the word that your patient will most likely use and not the medical term. All right. So let uh have a volunteer to say the first uh five words. All right. Uh I saw you Nam Fung, but uh like Anyone else who have not really get a chance to talk, uh, want to give it a try? If not, I'm just gonna give it to Fung Ben. All right, Fung, go ahead. Yeah, the first, uh, the first word is cough. The, Perfect. The, yeah, the second is sputum. So it's sputum. Sputum, yeah, sputum. Yep. Uh, the next word is productive. Perfect. Uh, the next is purulent. 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 The stress. Yep. The stress yep, is on the second. Yeah. Okay. And the next is hemotype. No, um. Sorry. Uh. It's actually stressing stressing on the first one. It's purulent. Purulent. Yeah. Purulent. And the next word is. Hemotipsy. Hemotipsy. Right. 
thesis. So, thesis. so the P, the, the P actually go with the O. Uh, so it's hemoptysis. Hemoptysis. Yeah. Yep. Hemoptysis. All right. So uh, there is one word in the layman term that might cause trouble uh, to pronounce. Do you know how to pronounce that word? I think uh, the pronunciation is phlegm, phlegm. Perfect. It's actually perfect. Yeah. So PH is like F and then the G is silent. So yeah. it's phlegm. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Next volunteer for the next five words. All right. I see number 56. Nasal, right, go ahead. Yep. Nasal, uh, nasal congestion. So it's congestion. It's congestion. Congestion. Yep. Perfect. Congested. Excellent. Rhinorrhea. Excellent. Serum, serumen impaction. Yep. Serumen impaction. Short throat. So sore throat. Short throat. So it's actually not it. There, there's not the sh, like it's not like Vietnamese as it's a little bit softer. Sore throat. Sore throat. Yep, that's good. All right, and then one more word. Hoarseness. So hoarseness. Hoarseness. Yep, so it's OA, so it's a little bit longer, and then the, there's the R in there, so hoarseness. Horse, hoarseness. Yep, that's good. All right. Like, you, like, you, like your pronunciation is really good. Thank you. All right, and then last one, I saw number 68. Oh. Sneezing. Wheezing. Okay. Excellent. Strider. So Strider. Strider. Yep. Larry, Larry, the So this Larry. one is, so the, the E A L is pronounced as ill. So laryngeal. Laryngeal. Swelling. Yep, laryngeal swelling. Oblique. All right. So the last one is a little tricky. Like pronounce it like slowly for me. Oblique. So it's anaphylaxis, right? So anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis. P is like an F, so phylaxis. Anaphylaxis. All right, and then now try to like uh, put less emphasis on the ana, so anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis. Yep, that's great. Excellent. All right, so do you know what that word means? Uh, I don't. Uh, All right. Anyone who know that word, uh, you guys can yell it, yell out loud. All right. So anaphylaxis is the like life-threatening uh, allergic reactions, right? When you have like an uh, like um, allergic, um, like almost kind of shock kind of picture with uh, an allergic reaction. So anaphylaxis. Này có phải là tiếng Việt là phù thanh quản đúng không? Ah, uh, so just ah uh, phù thanh quản là laryngeal swelling and anaphylaxis là sốc phản vệ đúng không? Thì nếu mình mình nhớ đúng theo tiếng Việt là sốc phản vệ. Anaphylaxis. Yep, anaphylaxis. All right, perfect. All right, any any uh, word on the layman term that you guys have issues with? 
or you guys want to discuss? If not, we're going to move on to the, the next practice part. Cái hostness là cái có là là không nói được cô hay là thế nào? Uh, cái... Hostness là cái giọng của bạn bị khàn á, bị khàn giọng á. Không khàn tiếng một cách đột ngột thì mình lại dùng từ hostness. Thế còn ừ. uh, nếu mà kéo dài thì mình sẽ dùng từ từ gì à cô? Uh, Đây là cũng là cũng là hostness luôn. À uh, thì chỉ cần là thấy, nếu mà mất tiếng hoàn toàn á thì người ta sẽ gọi là like như là không có cái uh, terminology đó chủ yếu là người ta sẽ describe là lose your voice là I cannot speak or I lost my voice còn nếu như mà vẫn có giọng nhưng mà cái giọng nó khàn hơn tại vì cái dây thanh quản nó bị sưng á thì người ta gọi là hoarseness à, mình không có đã nó ở đây nhưng mà lâu lâu sẽ nghe chữ potato voice À, đó là cái tiếng lóng của bên Mỹ dùng để, để, để diễn tả chữ hostness là potato voice. À, tại vì là <cười> chuyên ngành của của em có một cái 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 từ aphasia aphasia thì uh, uh-huh. nó có hai cái nhóm ấy thì cũng là không uh-huh. nói được lost your voice, yep. a broken yep. aphasia. So uh, aphasia like it's more of a mechanical like it's due to the muscle and the the brain right not really because of the um the vocal cord right so the hoarseness is describing the vocal cord issues aphasia is because of your either your muscle have issues or your brain have issues right là cái cái cơ hoặc là cái cái não của bạn nó không có hoạt động dẫn đến là không nói được chứ không phải là tại vì cái thay dây thanh quản của bạn có vấn đề còn ý, còn ví dụ như người ta nói uh, lose your voice hay là tắt tiếng á là dù, uh, thường là sẽ là hoarseness hay là lost your voice. All right, perfect. Uh, if no one else have issues or uh, questions, we're gonna move on to the next slide. All right, I gonna have another volunteer. Uh, number seven. Uh, Nga, go ahead. Uh, I cannot hear you. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Oops, sorry. Did you go? Sorry. All right. Can you pronounce the first word for me? The first word is apnea. Mm -hmm. And the second word means snoring. Yep. The third word is dyspnea. Yep. And the first word is uh, in, in Chris, the work of breathing. Mm-hmm. And the fifth word is uh, tra- trachinia. So it's tachypnea. So it's the K, right? So tachypnea. Trachinia. So it's T. So there's no, there's not really the R. So it's ta keep near. <laughs> yep. And then a lot of time, you uh, Americans are very lazy. So we we mix a lot. Like we change a lot of the like like vowel into the the sound R. Uh, so you're gonna uh, a lot of them they're gonna say ta keep near. So ta keep near. <laughs> All right. And I cannot see the slide. All right. No I'm sorry, but somebody is yeah sharing screen and I cannot see the slide. I don't know. Okay. All right. So why don't we uh move on to the next person? And thank you, Nia, for giving it a try. Uh, and then I saw Nyungle. You want to practice? Yes, and uh, uh, this near. 
this near. And uh, it means softness or breath or difficulty breathing. Difficulty. Difficulty breathing. Mm -hmm. And the next word here, increased work of breathing is so called. In, so uh, increased. increased. So there's an ED, so increased. Increased work of breathing. Mm -hmm. Is is mean are a con uh hot yes and the next word touchy near touchy is mean uh uh touchy is a uh, fast mm -hmm. is fast and near is uh near is breathing fast breathing thở mm -hmm. Yep, so pronunciation for the CH, remember what Andine said? So it's pronounced as a K, so tachypnea. Tachypnea, tachypnea. Yep, so there's no ch, so tachypnea. Tachypnea, tachypnea. Yep. yep, that's good. And the next word, uh, nasal flaring. Flaring. So na nasal, so A, nasal. Nasal. Nasal flaring. Perfect. Nasal flaring là uh, thở phải mở rộng cái mũi để thở ấy là à này từ này tiếng Việt mình cũng chịu mình không <cười> biết tiếng Việt. À, uh, uh, thôi thở phập phồng cánh mũi nó có phải oh. mở. Great, yes. thanks. I'm learning something today. Great, thank you. <cười> flaring, flaring of the no, no cheese. Là phập phồng cánh right. mũi. Perfect. All right. thank, uh, thank you. All right. Next uh, person. Let, let's give everyone a chance to practice. I saw number 73. I uh, have her hand raised. Oh, <laughs> sorry. My number is 722. Uh, I, uh, I write uh, uh, wrong my number. Oh, no worry. Uh, just remember to correct it so and and Dean can uh, do the um, head count correctly. But uh, go ahead, you can uh, read the next word. Yeah, retraction, uh, meaning a pulling to breath or sucking in ribs. In Vietnamese, like uh, good long long mm -hmm. uh, The next word is hearing loss, and uh, like hard of hearing or death. And tinnitus, meaning ringing in the ear. Mm -hmm. The next word is ear discharge. And uh, last word is um, effusion, uh, meaning uh, fluid in a sampling. The example like a lural effusion, uh, like uh, meaning fluid in the chest. Great, perfect. Your pronunciation is excellent. Thank you. All right, and then last person to finish uh, off the table. All right, I want, I need one more volunteer, guys. All right. If not, I'm just gonna fix. Oh, go ahead. I hear someone. Okay, so can I try it? Uh... Records. Mm -hmm. um, this one I remember it's a brands. So it's rails. Rails. Yep. Rails. Yeah. Uh, up near. Mm -hmm. Snoring. Perfect. Oh, I think it's got like duplicate up there. All right, perfect. All righty. Practice time. All right, so this is a couple, so this is the time where you kind of come like use all of the voc like vocabulary that we just learned or about sign symptoms to get a history of your patients, right? All right, so who want to read the example? Guys, right. try to speak. Not to read, okay? Yes. 
Yep. Okay, can I try? <laughs> yep, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Let, yeah, let's practice. Do you smoke? Do you vape? How much do you smoke a day? How many packs a day do you smoke? Do you have a shortness of breath? Is it hard to breath? To breath? Yep. Um, so the, the only thing that I see is that you adding the A in the have shortness of breath. So there's no A in there. So do you have shortness of breath? And then this is actually, yep. And then this is my mistake. I'm missing an E there. So it, is it hard to breathe, not to breath? So breathe is the verb of the, like the, the motions of like breathing is breathe. So there's an E there. So is it hard to breathe? Is, is it hard to breathe? Mm -hmm. All right. And then advanced level. You guys have the handout. You guys have the list of symptoms and signs. I want you guys to make up a sentence asking about one of those uh, signs and symptoms for me. All right? We want to try it first. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start picking random people. Uh, number 58, uh, Mei Yang. All right, so I want you to use the table of signs and symptoms and make uh, questions using those uh, terminology, asking your patient about one of the symptoms. Uh, Yang, you are on mute if you are trying to say. Uh, 58, you are on mute, so we cannot really hear you. Yes. Do you have a hostiness? Um, so, so the word you use is hoarseness, right? Hoarseness. 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 Okay. All right. So what? Uh, so your question uh, was, what do you have hoarseness? Right. Yes. Great. Um, uh, yep. So now, can you try to make it in using the terminology your patient can understand? Hmm. You can't, um, you can't, you can't, um, you can't talk, can you? Right, so that is a yes, no questions, right? So in, when you ask in history, the first thing we are taught is not to ask any yes, no question because it kind of like, all, doesn't allow the patient to express themselves. So what I would, change is that like do you have any problem with your voice or do you have any problem with speaking is is how i would phrase this or using the the terms here is like have you experienced forced voice all right great that that was a good try though all right one more one more volunteer please Uh, let me scroll through, see who have not. Uh, number 49, I don't think I heard your voice today. So let's hear it. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I have some problem with my voice. So I don't volunteer, but um, yeah. I will try making a question. Um, so um, uh, my question is, uh, uh, do you notice any blood when you cough? So if Excellent. Because Perfect. That is, yep, yeah. that is a very good question. And then can you use the terminology in your, in your questions? Uh, is your um, 
Uh, so, um, uh, do you think that uh, you uh, uh, you suffer from hemoptysis? So hemoptysis. Yes. Can, so I, can yep. Can you pronounce that word for me? Hemoptysis. Hemoptysis. Yep, that's better. All right. So. Okay. Your like you would like report to your like attending or your senior is like the patient complaint of hemoptysis, right? All right, thank you. And then one last one before we move on to the next one, number sixty, Fang Vang Bao. Okay. Uh, my question is, do you have a problem of your? No, no, running nose. All right. So running nose is a symptom, right? So mm -hmm. what I would ask that question is not if you experience like, so it's, it's not an organ, it's just a symptom in itself. So like you can ask, have you, ex have you been experiencing running nose? Mm -hmm. Right. Or do you have running nose? Is what I would ask because like yeah because I like otherwise the the phrase that you just made it sound like running nose is an yeah. organ oh. well. all right and then well. so let's say the patient say yes I have running nose how would you report it to your uh like senior physicians okay. all right so the patients have running nose, right? So now you need to write out a medical record or you need to tell another physician that the patient has been experiencing running nose. How would you say it? Um, oh, oh, running snow is right now here, so. Mm. All right, so let, let, let do it slow together, right? So what is the terminology for running nose? Or the, the terminology is rhinoreas. So rhinorrhea. Rhinorrhea. That's great. All right. So your patient is having running now. So the way you would report it is the patient complained of rhinorrhea. Oh. The patient complains of rhinorrhea. Mm -hmm. Rear. Rios. Don't, don't, yep. I know Rios. Yep. Perfect. All right. So the like reporting is pretty easy in English because you you literally just say the patient complaining of whatever the symptom you just put it then. So it's a lot easier to report than to actually ask the question to the patients. All right. Yeah, right. Great. All right. So that's one thing I want you guys to like practice uh, at home. So like using this table and then start just like imagine the patients and then start asking questions to them using the lay the layman term and then try to report all of the symptoms that the patient have in medical term that way you get to practice both of them all right moving on all right common respiratory conditions thank god there's not a lot of them so we can hopefully go through uh, them fairly quickly all right, I'm gonna go through the list to see who else I have not hear from today. Bui uh, Hung Ngap, number one. Yes. Right. Um, so, um, you are I. A respiratory traction infection. Oh, so that was my typo. So it doesn't have the shins in it. Let me fix it before I forget. So let let make sure you guys read it correctly. There you go. All right, try it again. Sorry. Upper respiratory tract infection. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So um. If you want to sound a little bit natural, make the, the A a little bit softer. So respiratory. Respiratory. 
respiratory. Yes, respiratory. Respiratory. Yep, perfect. All right, so that is common cold. Um, so any kind of cold, running nose, no. all of that is uh, respiratory tract infections, right? Um, so you you will hear they use the word URI a lot because it's a lot shorter than uh, upper respiratory tract infection. All right, next terminology. Uh, influenza. Yep, influenza. And the patient will tell you the, uh, that he or she has a? Mm, it's mean flu. In flu, perfect. Mm, yes. All right. And last word for you. Uh, allergic rhinitis. Allergic rhinitis. Great, perfect. And it's the mean, layman term is seasonal allergy or fever. So hay fever. Hay fever. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Next person. Uh, Number 36, Nhu Ngọc. Faring, faring itis. Group A streptococcus faring itis. All right, so pharyngitis. So those two go together, pharyngitis. Pharyngitis. All right, so group A streptococcus pharyngitis. Group A streptococcus pharyngitis. Pharyngitis, there's a G there, right? Pharyngitis. Perfect. All right, and the patient will tell you that it is, that they have a... a sore throat. Perfect. And then you will hear this word a lot if you're in pediatric. Um, so strep throat is the short term or the layman term for group A strep pharyngitis. All right, next word. Next word is larynx uh, itis. Right, just live pharyngitis, right? So the only thing different is the, the very first syllable. So read, say it again. Laryngitis. 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 Gitis. Yep. All right. And next word? Uh, ear effusions. Yep, ear effusion. So fluid build up in the ear, right? All right, one last one. Otitis, external yep. media. Right, so external, there's not, there's no L at the end. Mm -hmm. So otitis uh, external or otitis media. External, okay, thank yep. you. All right, so it's just the inflammations or the infections of the outer ear, the middle ear, right? All right, thank you. And last one, let's see, number 79. Um, bronchitis. Um, bronchiolitis. All right, so this is a little so, tricky, right? So you just say bronchitis, but it's actually for this, this is one of the exceptions. So that is actually pronounced as E, so bronchiolitis. Um, bronchiolitis. Yep. yep. All right, this is, this is tricky, right? Yeah. All right, so let, let, let break it down before we pronounce it, right? So... There's three familiar roots in here, right? So we already know itis, right? So itis is inflammation of something, so that's good. All right, now we have three roots that we can, that involve in this condition. So the first one is? Larynx. So it's laryngo, right? Laryngo. Okay. So laryngo is the larynx, all right? And then the next organ, Tracheal, tracheal. Yep, tracheal, so the trachea, right? And then the last one? Bronchitis. 
right? So bronch, like sort of the bronchial, like or the airway, right? So now um, try to put them together. So laryngo, tracheal, bronchitis. Laryngo, tracheal, bronchitis. Yep. And the common term for it is croup. So it's a, a very com uh, common condition in, in pediatrics. You see it all the time in the winter. So it's croup. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the inflammations of the larynx, the trachea, and the airway all together. The whole tract is inflamed. So croup. All right, and then last word. Laryngomalacia. So remember, like, remember how you pronounce this one, laryngo, right? Not laryngo. So do the same thing for this word. Right, so. Laryngomalacia. So Malaysia. Malaysia, laryngomalacia. Yep. yep, perfect. And this is the floppy airway and other very common conditions in babies. Okay, perfect. Mm, thank you. Next person. Uh, uh, let me make sure I'm not picking someone twice. Uh, Naman, no, you want to give it a try? Uh, sorry, uh, Sarah, yeah. I suggest yep. number 22. Okay. Yeah. You said 50, like 32 or 22? Uh, 22. 22. So two, two. let's attempt to. Yeah. All right. Excuse me. What is the pneumonia? All right. Pneumonia. Yeah. It's an uh, infection of the lung. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, next is a pneumon pneumonitis. So remember, it's the Latin root, uh, Latin uh, suffix. So the I is little, the E there is I, right? So pneumonitis. Pneumon pneumonitis. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. stress is on the uh, second to last syllable. So pneumonitis. Pneumonitis. Yep. Okay. It's a uh, inflammation of the lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's next is a uh, uh, pulmonary edema. So pulmonary edema. Edema. All right. So uh, read it, Say the whole word again for me. Uh, pulmonary edema. So pulmonary, pulmonary, pulmonary edema. Edema. Yep. yep. That means it's a lung swelling. Right. And then okay. last word for you. Uh, next is a pneumothorax. Yep. Uh, it's the air leak outside outside of the lung. So leak. Leak. Right air now, put the S in. So air leaks. Air leak outside of the lung. Yeah, I want you to read the leaks word for me because, uh, like you are you are kind of skipping the the final sound. So leaks. Leaks. Yep. Air leaks. Yep, yep that's outside. much better. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. And then, uh, and Dean, do you know? Uh, you have any other yeah. suggestions? The next one is uh. 89? 89, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, plural, um, plural effusion. So if How about my pronunciation? I, I call 89 and then you're 29. Eh? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so 89, 89, please. She couldn't hear us. 
right. Okay, so yeah, okay, sorry, so 29. Okay. <laughs> she couldn't. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Can I? Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Um, 29, please. Bro, effusion. So effusion. Effusion. Yep. Um, bro, if Right. Go ahead. Can you can yes. you say the, the word again? Um, so I, I want you to say the, the first word for me is plural. Plural. So plural. Plural. So there's the plural. P and the L. So plural. 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 Yep. Plural evolution. Yep. Uh, All right. And plural ev evima. All right, so this is a little tricky. So it's empyema. Empyema. Yep. So plural empyema. Plural empyema. Plural so, empyema. Yep, that's great. Yes. All right, next um, word. Tubo um, tuberculosis. 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 All right, perfect. Um, asthma. Asthma. Asthma extrapolation. Exacerbation. Exacerbation. Yep, exacerbation. 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 All right, slow down. You you are trying to do it too quickly and then you're starting to mix up the, the sound. So asthma exacerbation. Asthma is asthma exacerbation. All right. Do it very slow for me. Exacerbation. 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 Yep. All right. So if 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 you find it's really hard to say quickly, then just do it slowly. That is yes. why, like, as long as you pronounce the sounds, the patient can understand you. So asthma exacerbation. Asthma exacerbation. Asthma exacerbation. All right. Um, All right. Thank you. All right, and then last person, Nandine. I think that we go back to uh, 89, Bùi Thủy Thanh Tuyền. If you can unmute yourself. I just want to check. <laughs> Let's see that she look at the screen, but she she couldn't hear uh, uh, Thanh Tuyền. 89? No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's why you see that on the video, on the camera, you see people, but they working something else. Okay, let's see, move to another one. Okay, 42, 42, 42. The same? <laughs> Okay, thanks. Unmute yourself. 42, unmute, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah, this is the COPD. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So, chronic. Chronic. Chronic, like chronic, obstructive pulmonary disease. So disease, the, the stress is on the uh, second uh, syllable. So disease. Disease. Yep, that's much better. Yeah. All right. So chronic obstructive Next. pulmonary disease. Yeah. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Great. All right, next one. The next one is objective sleep apnea. Yep, and then if you can put the stress for the obstructive, uh, it's on the second one, obstructive. Obstructive. Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. 
Great. And then this is just a, a duplication. So ignore that one. The next one is pneumonia. All right. All right. And then we're going to, this, this table is for medications and procedures. So uh, if you want to, uh, to try the first two, please. Uh, the, the same person, can you? Uh... 42 again. Yes, yeah. 42. Yeah. yeah. Try. Yeah. Yes. First one is inhaler. 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 Right. Uh, and. Nebulizer. Yep, nebulizer. Nebulizer. Uh, right. Control. Dilator. Right, bronchodilator. Bronchodilator. All right, great. Uh, and then, perfect. Uh, just to make sure that like you guys know inhaler and nebulizer, right? Do I need to explain what it is? Uh, All right, so. Inhaler. Because I think um, nebulizer is like my phí dùng yeah. không ta? Mấy phí dùng nhỉ? Inhaler and then... Nói uh, nè. Có bạn nào biết uh, từ tiếng Việt của nó thì nói cho mọi người biết. Cho mình biết chứ. Nó là cây ống hít nhỉ? Đây là máy khí dùng cô ạ. Đây là máy khí dùng mà. Máy khí dùng là, máy khí dùng là nebulizer, phải không? Còn inhaler là, là gì? Em cái 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 để hít ấy, thịt để hít vào còn dạng phế quả này. Inhale là hít vào ấy, inhale. Ok. Là tiếng Việt mình không có cái nào à, không có cái thuật ngữ chuyên dụng phải không? Tức là inhale là đúng không? Ok. Cái cái là bình bình xịt liều á, uống hít trong cái asthma. Cái cái bình xịt mà định liều sẵn của mấy cái thuốc kiểu như là Ventolin xịt ấy. À không tại vì mình mình chỉ muốn mà mình thì giả thuật ngữ tiếng Việt nên là mình chỉ muốn à À, cái mình coi mấy bạn là có thuật ngữ tiếng Việt hay không thôi. Là bình xịt định liều. Inhaler là bình xịt. Cái này, oh, xin lỗi, uh, nói tiếng Việt, tại vì cái này qua thuật ngữ tiếng Việt. Cái này, nó bốn thứ nó lộn xộn với nhau lắm. Một uh, là nebulizer. Hai là buffer. Giống như nó nói mấy cái xịt xịt pentolin á. Thì bên mình bên Mỹ gọi là buffer. Uh, buffer. Rồi cái inhaler đó, đúng ra là cái cái ống hít chắc là vậy còn một cái nữa aerosol <cười> cái đó là tôi không biết dịch tiếng việt là gì nha. mấy cái mấy bốn thứ này nó dễ lộn nhau yeah. bên bên mỹ giờ nó bỏ cái buffer bây giờ là nó gọi là inhaler hết à, như vậy thì ống thở là inhaler à, như vậy là inhaler là buffer mà hả là như vậy thì inhaler không thể dịch là ống hít bên việt nam được và à, cái đó là ống xịt <cười> Yeah. All right. All right. Now, and and then can we have a next uh, person okay. for the next few few words? I think it's a uh, fifteen, one five, fifteen. See ya. Can you can you give me the book? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next word is uh, tonsillectomy and adenoectomy. Tonsillectomy. All right. Yep, I can hear you. So just uh, just pay attention to the stress a little bit. So tonsillectomy, adeno, adenoidectomy. Ah, tonsillectomy, right? right. Next one. Um, adenodectomy. All right, great. Next word. Okay. Uh, tympano, um, tympanostomy. Yep. Tympanostomy. So uh -huh. again. Endo, endocardiac intubation. All right, so slow endo, down a little bit. Endotracheal intubation. Perfect. All right, last word. Tracheostomy. Right, and remember the stress oh, is always before the the omi, right? So okay. Yep. Yes. 
tracheostomy, right? Yeah, tracheostomy. A tracheostomy. All right. Okay. Um, Great. ventilator. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And then, okay. yep. You, uh, you, your pronunciation is really good. Just like making sure that you pay attention to where the stress is. And then when you see, uh, like, when you face with like multiple syllable words, just slow down a little bit so that you can, like, you don't mispronounce them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. And then last person. I think it's uh, 41. Could I remember? I can't remember that we call you yet. 41. Why two? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, just go yes. ahead. The, the, first, the, the first word is bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the second word is tora. Thoracosynthesis. Right. So, thoracosynthesis. Thoracosynthesis. Right. Yep, thoracosynthesis. So, it, it, it sounds more like sin, like thoracosynthesis. The, the third uh, was a thoracostomy. And the, and the last was a poly. Somnography. All right. So polysomnography. Polysomnography. Yep. Polysomnography. All right. So I actually gonna skip this since we a little bit tired of time. If we have it, we'll come back. But I want you guys to do this for me. If this is your homework. Um so uh, I want to have a little bit more interaction between learners because I feel like when you learn together, you have friends, you have motivations, and then you have a accountability buddy to kind of get you through things. Um, so I want everyone in the group, pick a random person um, to pair up. Uh, it doesn't have to be in your same group. As long as you guys can pair up and fight the time to record together, that's fine. And then I want you to use all of the terminology that we learned today and record a conversation. One of you will be the doctor, the other one will be a patient. And then you can pick between uh, three topics. Either you um, gonna play a checking a history. So you are as a physician uh, asking questions to check the patient history. Um, the second option is you are as a physician informing your patients about his or her diagnosis or you are informing and obtaining a consent for a procedure. You can pick one out of three. You don't have to do all three. So pick one out of three. Uh, one of you is the doctor, one of you is the patient. I want to see the interaction between the two and record it. It should not be more than five minutes and then upload it uh, to the class Facebook by January the 13th. So it's gonna be Friday the 13th guys gonna be fun all right and um since i have a little bit of free time this month i'm gonna like pay attention and uh check out those videos and uh the best team will get a little a little gift from me so competitions don't way get things go far so there's a little incentive there to do your homework all right and that's it i'm um, sorry we kind of run out of time a little bit but uh you have the list, you have the list of questions. This is a one thing that I want you guys to try to practice at home. Uh, and then if if one of, uh, if you guys want to post your answer on the Facebook group, I can answer them uh, and make correction as well. All right. And so, okay guys, so take advantage from Dr. Sarah because she's off for one month. So she have time to check with you, okay? Otherwise, if you don't take it, uh, take the advantage, you will uh, not practice very well, okay? <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the end of the class. Thank you everyone for participating. I'm like, I appreciate you, you guys teacher. trying. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Okay, you are so very welcome. everybody, uh, I ask you to uh, leave the room because uh, after that we have the, the end of the class, another class right now. So maybe 
you can you could leave the room right now. Thank you very much. And if you have any question, just uh, put the post on our group Facebook. So we will talk about that later. Okay. Okay.